Shoes of Christ arise and put your armor on. Strong in the strength which God supplies. Strong in the strength which God supplies through His beloved Son. In the Lord of hosts and in His might. Depart, who in the strength of Jesus trusts, who in the strength of Jesus trusts is more than conquerors. Then in his great might, with all his strength in do, but take to arm you for Warn you for the fight, the panoply of God. And having all things done, and all your conflicts past, you may overcome through Christ alone. You may overcome through Christ alone and stand in time. Good morning. It's another lovely morning. Let you see the beautiful sunflowers over next door. You can you can just barely see that other ones like the like it's got two arms where the other little sunflowers are coming along. And we are continuing our journey through the scriptures, picking up today in Daniel 2, verse 1 with Nebuchadnezzar's dream. One night, during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that disturbed him so much that he couldn't sleep. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that troubles me. Tell me what I dreamed, for I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king. Tell us the dream and we will tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I am serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb and your houses will be demolished into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and the dream, what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. They said again, Please, your majesty, tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. The king replied, I can see through your trick. You're trying to stall for time because you know I am serious about what I said. If you don't tell me the dream, you will be condemned. You have conspired to tell me lies in hopes that something will change. But tell me the dream, and then I will know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers replied to the king, There isn't a man alive who can tell your majesty his dream. And no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing from any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. This is an impossible thing the king requires. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they do not live among people. The king was furious when he heard this. And he sent out orders to execute all the wise men of Babylon. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time so he could tell the king what the dream meant. Then Daniel went home and told his friends Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven, saying, 
Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he alone has all wisdom and power. He determines the course of world events. He removes kings and set others on the throne. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he himself is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we ask of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. Daniel interprets the dream, beginning in Daniel 2, verse 24. Daniel went in to see Arioch, who had been ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to him, Don't kill the wise men. Take me to the king, and I will tell him the meaning of the, his dream. Then Arioch quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives from Judah who will tell your majesty the meaning of your dream. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, Is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? Daniel replied, There are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can tell the king such things. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. The revealer of mysteries has shown you what is going to happen. And it is not because I am wiser than any living person that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wanted you to understand what you were thinking about. Your majesty, in your vision, you saw in front of you a huge and powerful statue of a man, shining brilliantly frightening and awesome. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were of silver. Its belly and thighs were of bronze. Its legs were of iron, and its feet were a combination of iron and clay. But as you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain by supernatural means. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue collapsed in a heap of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. The pieces were crushed as small as shaft on a threshing floor, and the wind blew them all away without a trace. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was the dream. Now I will tell your majesty what it means. Your majesty, you are king over many kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world and has put even the animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another great kingdom, inferior to yours, will rise to take your place. After that has, kingdom has fallen, yet a third great kingdom, represented by the bronze belly and thighs, will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth kingdom as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw that were a combination of iron and clay show that this kingdom will be divided. Some parts of it will be as strong as iron and others as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage. But this will not succeed, just as iron and clay do not mix. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. No one will ever conquer it. It will shatter all these kingdoms into nothingness, but it will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain by supernatural means, crushing to dust the statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold. The great God has shown your majesty what will happen in the future. The dream is true, and its meaning is certain. Nebuchadnezzar rewards Daniel, beginning in Daniel chapter 2, verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar bowed to the ground before Daniel, and worshipped him, 
And he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burn sweet incense before him. The king said to Daniel, Truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all his wise men. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of all the affairs of the providence of Babylon, while Daniel remained in the king's court. Nebuchadnezzar's Gold Statue, beginning in Daniel 3, verse 1, and this would be about 598 B.C. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the priests, prefects, governors, advisors, counselors, judges, magistrates, and all provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. When all these officials had arrived and were standing before the image King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, Listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, pipes, and other instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshipped the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed him on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king! You issued a decree requiring that all people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They have defied your majesty by refusing to serve your gods or to worship the god's gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance. If you bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments, all will be well. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. What God will be able to rescue you from my power then? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, your majesty can be sure that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. The Blazing Furnace, beginning in Daniel 3, verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace fully clothed. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames leaked out and killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell down into the roaring flames. But suddenly, as he was watching, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men? and throw them into the furnace? Yes, they said. We did indeed, your majesty. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted. I see four men, unbound, 
walking around in the fire. They aren't even hurt by the flames. And the fourth looks like a divine being. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the princes, prefects, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then the Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angels to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's commands and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be crushed into heaps of rubble. There is no other god who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. The following prophecies were probably given in the years before Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem in 597 BC. Jeremiah speaks at the temple, beginning in Jeremiah 7, verse 1. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go to the entrance of the Lord's temple and give this message to the people. O Judah, listen to this message from the Lord. Listen to it, all of you who worship here. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Even now, if you quit your evil ways, I will let you stay in your own land. But do not be fooled by those who repeatedly promise your safety because the temple of the Lord is here. I will be merciful only if you stop your wicked thoughts and deeds and are fair to others. And if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, and widows, and if you stop murdering, and if you stop worshiping idols as you do now to your own harm, then I will let you stay in this land that I gave to your ancestors to keep forever. Do you think that because the temple is here, you will never suffer? Don't fool yourselves. Do you really think you can steal, murder, commit adultery, lie, and worship Baal and all those other new gods of yours and then come here and stand before me in my temple and chant, we are safe, only to go right back to all those evils again? Do you think this temple, which honors my name, is a den of thieves? I see all the evil going on there, says the Lord. Go to the place at Shiloh where I once put the tabernacle to honor my name. See what I did there because of all the wickedness of my people, the Israelites. While you were doing these wicked things, says the Lord, I spoke to you about it repeatedly, but you would not listen. I called out to you, but you refused to answer. So just as I destroyed Shiloh, I will now destroy this temple that was built to honor my name. This temple that you trust for help. This place that I gave to you and your ancestors. And I will send you into exile, just as I did your relatives, the people of Israel. Judah's persistent idolatry, beginning in Jeremiah 7, verse 16. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, and don't beg me to help them, for I will not listen to you. Do not... Do you not see what they are doing throughout the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? No wonder I am so angry. Watch how the children gather wood and the fathers build sacrificial fires. See how the women knead dough and make cakes to offer to the Queen of Heaven. And they give drink offerings to their own other idol gods. Am I the one they are hurting? Says, asked the Lord. Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. So the Sovereign Lord says, I will pour out my terrible fury on this place. Its peoples, animals, trees, and crops will be consumed by the unquenchable fire of my anger. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. 
away with your burnt offerings and sacrifices. Eat them yourselves. When I led your ancestors out of Egypt, it was not burnt offerings and sacrifices I wanted from them. This is what I told them. Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Only do as I say, and all will be well. But my people would not listen to me. They kept on doing whatever they wanted, following the stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backward instead of forward. From the day your ancestors left Egypt until now, I have continued to send my prophets, day in and day out. But my people have not listened to me or even tried to hear. They have been stubborn and sinful, even worse than their ancestors. Tell them all this, but do not expect them to listen. Shout out your warnings, but do not expect them to respond. Say to them, this is the nation whose people will not obey the Lord their God and who refuse to be taught. Truth has vanished from among them. It is no longer heard on their lips. O Jerusalem, shave your head in mourning and weep alone on the mountain. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken this generation that has provoked his fury. The Valley of Slaughter, beginning in Jeremiah 7, verse 30. The people of Judah have sinned before my very eyes, says the Lord. They have set up their abominable idols right in my own temple, defiling it. They have built a pagan, the pagan shrines of Topheth in the valley of the son of Hinnom, where they sacrifice their little sons and daughters in the fire. I have never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind to command such a thing. So beware, for the time is coming, says the Lord. When that place will no longer be called Topheth or the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. They will bury so many bodies in Topheth that there won't be room for all the graves. The corpses of my people will be food for the vultures and wild animals, and no one will be left to scare them away. I will put an end to the happy singing and laughter in the streets of Jerusalem. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will no longer be heard in the towns of Judah. The land will lie in complete desolation. In that day, says the Lord, the enemy will break open the graves of the kings and officials of Judah and the graves of the priests, prophets, and common people. They will dig out their bones and spread them out on the ground before the sun, moon, and stars, the gods my people have loved, served, and worshipped. Their bones will not be gathered up again or buried, but will be scattered on the ground like dung. And the people of this evil nation who survive will wish to die rather than live where I will send them. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, so our closing hymn this morning is God of Our Fathers. Oh, I invite you to take a deep breath and sing along with me. Oh, my. Zoom out a little bit. This, by the way, is our national hymn.
hath our chosen way. Let's see. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Mary Nell. Good morning, Reggie. Good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Mom. Hope everybody has a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all back the, tomorrow morning at 8.